Now to another top story, the mounting security fears ahead of the Sochi Winter Olympics. Russian security officials are hunting down three potential female suicide bombers, known as Black Widows. It's believed one of the women is already in Sochi. For more on this, we're joined by Don Borelli. He's a former FBI counterintelligence official and joins us live from New York via Skype. So, so Mr. Borelli, what do we know about these so-called Black Widows? Well, the Black Widows, th these female uh, terrorists have been very effective in the past, uh, and particularly with these uh, with the Chechen uh, terrorist groups. They've been using females for more than 10 years. They've executed attacks against uh, subway stations, a rock concert, uh, even taken down an airliner. So they're a very effective tool for these terrorist organizations. And what do we make of the Russian security officials' tactics to hand out flyers with the photos of these so-called black widows to try and find them? And how concerned are you, or how concerned do you think people should be, that one of them is believed to be in Sochi right now? Well, this is a serious concern, and, and because these females don't typically fit the profile of what most people expect a terrorist or suicide bomber to look like. I mean, most people that see the news, they come out of Iraq and Afghanistan and so forth, picture a male between 18 and 35 years old and so forth. And, and these females, uh, particularly when they're wearing Western clothing and makeup, certainly don't fit the, the profile of what you know, most people view as a terrorist. The fact that somebody may be already inside is particularly scary because, as you know, the, the Russians have set up multiple layers of, of security. But the key thing is going to be that, that certain people that have privileged access, whether they be uh, in ticket taking or some type of a hospitality function, has a thorough background investigation been been done by the Russians because if somebody has privileged access, then they would effectively bypass some of these security measures. How good are Russian forces at taking down militants like this at, or at stopping attacks? They're, they're very good. The Russians are not new to security and intelligence, and, uh, and I'm quite certain that they have some key assets uh, that have been able to penetrate this group. I think what's going to be particularly important for these Olympic Games to go off safe, safely and successfully is how much the Russians are going to be willing to share with, with the EU, with the West, with the U.S., with everybody, because the Olympics, it's not just up to the Russians to provide a safe and secure games. Yes, it's in their backyard, but the Olympics belong to the world. It's everybody's event, and the key to thwarting these attacks is effective intelligence collection and sharing by all of the people that have a vested interest in these games. How do you stop an attack like this, though, as you say, from a so-called black widow who blends very easily, one of whom may actually be in, in, in the city of Sochi right now, how do you stop that person from attacking the city? Again, and this goes back to uh, months and months of preparation, intelligence gathering and sharing, because the best way to stop these attacks is not to just set up extra layers of security guards and barriers and, and cameras. Yes, you need all those things, but really it starts at trying to thwart out these plots and figure out who these people are before they even get to Sochi. A lot of training is going to be uh, important, and we're, you know, we're well past that. All the training should have already been done months ago. But realize that in an event like the Olympics, you have so many people that are needed. Many of them are volunteers that come in to help in various hospitality functions. These people should also have a level of training to be you know, uh, vigilant on what to look for and suspicious activity and these type of things. So it, it, there are multiple layers of security by, you know, the seasoned professional as well as just the sensitizing the general public to be on the lookout and, and be aware for, of suspicious activity. Let me ask you personally, uh, would you be comfortable going with your family to Sochi to watch I some would. of these I, events? I, I would. I think it would, you know, I've never been to a Winter Olympics. I would, I would go. I would, I would love to go. But, you know, like anything else, I would, I would be cautious that the areas that 
are probably of most concern are not the events themselves, because these are pretty hard targets. The the stadiums where they have the uh, the ice skating and the hockey and so forth, and and the, the the ski slopes, but some of the softer targets are more problematic. Things like the fan zones and and different corporate sponsors, the hotels, and some of these things that happen outside of the main venues themselves, these are much more difficult to protect because many times it's kind of an open access type of situation. It's more of a, a less hardened perimeter. And these are the areas that I would be worried about. Don, thank you. That's Don Borelli, a former FBI counterintelligence official and COO at the Sufran Group. He was speaking with us live from New York. Those growing security threats at Sochi could be driving fans away from the Olympic grounds. Hundreds of thousands of tickets remain unsold with just two and a half weeks to go before the opening ceremonies. Our business host, Nisha